Lucy Janjigian, listed in the Who's Who in American Art, is an award-winning, internationally renowned painter. Four of her series of paintings have been professionally produced into narrated art videos that have been translated into several languages and distributed worldwide. What sets her apart from most artists of her stature is that her art is rooted in humanitarian concerns. A devout Christian, she paints to bring attention, understanding, and compassion to the displaced people of the world, from the biblical to the contemporary American homeless population. Her inspiration arises from personal experience. Before she was born, her parents escaped from the Armenian genocide in Turkey. Due to war and civil unrest, she herself was a refugee from first Jerusalem and later Beirut. She's worked with the UN in Palestinian refugee camps and taught school in Damascus. And it all finds a place on her canvases. Lucy, you paint a wide variety of subjects. Is there a theme in there? Yes, uh, one is the beauty of nature that I love to express and the plight of humanity. That sounds pretty big. It is. Uh, I do also a biblical. I am a student of the Bible. I've done a lot of Bible studies. So I do Bible study and uh, refugees and homelessness mm -hmm. is what I sort of concentrate on. Yeah, it's an interesting link refugees and homelessness, and yet you see a similarity in there. They're both uprooted, mm -hmm. one from home and one from land. Let's talk about the first uprooting in your life, before your life, your parents. Can you just very briefly tell me what they went through? Uh, during the 1915 uh, Turkish uh, genocide of the Armenians, my mother was a hidden child with a uh, Arab Muslim family and my father was with 5,000 people went up to Musada, the mountain of Moses where they were 60 days and then rescued. And you have a dramatic painting that involves a cliff. Tell me about that moment. Uh, I did that from my imagination that people would be forced to go up a cliff and I had a red sky and that's the one that has gotten most uh, emotional response from the viewer. But what was the experience that your, your parents had? It was not that. I did their story separately and then I added others from my imagination. Tell me about that moment in their lives. Uh, my father, as I said, uh, with 5,000 other villagers from eight villages near this mountain, uh, according to the priest and the minister, they said, why should we stay in our villages and be prey to the Turkish army who will send us out on to marches in the desert or rape, kill? We will escape to the mountain and it overlooked the Mediterranean. And they hoped during World War I they would see some warships that hopefully would rescue them. For 60, almost 60 days, no ship was there. They had decided to do mass suicide and that Sunday, it was September 5, 1918 then, and uh, they were singing, Lord have mercy on us. And the boy who was guide looking over the cliff onto the, onto the Mediterranean Sea spotted a French warship. So he dropped a red cross. The ship came and by God's providence, when somebody went and told him we have 5,000 people up there, the captain of the ship was Captain Dikran Tekeyan, Armenian, French nationality. So they were saved the last And minute. they were saved wow. and rescued to Port Said in Egypt. Painting, how did, how did you come to painting or how did it come to you? I craved to paint all my life. When I was a little girl, my neighbor had polio and her parents would have an artist come and teach her at home and I just look and wish I could do it. We didn't have paints, we d I didn't have money or to do it. So when I went to college, I would see students outside painting and I'd say, oh, I wish I could do it. But I was in science and I had experiments and I had to work. No money, no time, so no painting. By the third, when I got married and my third child was born, uh, I started night school and that just released me completely and I felt so free, so independent, so happy. 
I could express myself, and the teacher said, you're like a wild horse on, horse on fire. <laughs> and I really was. I felt I was flying high. And from then on, I went to the Art Students League and then to other studies with very good teachers in New York City. Why do you paint? One, to express myself, my faith, which is the Bible study comes through, and two, to show my deep emotion and caring uh, for, like, the homeless and, uh, and those who are uh, evicted from their land and their homes. Mm -hmm. You had uh, a discovery or an awakening about the nature and the power of art. Tell me about that. It's interesting because when I had the empty nest, my three kids had left home, I was really praying, what should I do with my time? Play tennis, enjoy lunches? But the harder I prayed, the more I went to paint. And by now I was in a studio, a Stacy Studio works, Workshop Studio in New York City. I kept just going there and I felt I really have to get my faith onto canvas. And I was born in Jerusalem, and for Monday, Thursday, we went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and that had a very big impression on my heart, and I wanted to express it. Mm -hmm. And I did it on a six foot by four foot painting, and I thought I had done. And done that, what? Done with painting? Done with, done with that feeling. Okay. And then, it, that was in 1984, my first painting, and it became Journey to Resurrection. The last one I did was in 2004, and it was a series of 33 paintings called Journey to Resurrection, which became a DVD, and it's translated to eight languages. Wow. Tell me about the theme of um, uprootedness mm. in that. Uh, the uprooted has two parts. One is the uprooted story of my parents, the Armenian genocide inclusive. And uh, it has 32 paintings, 19 are of Armenian genocide, and the 13 are of universal genocide. Three of them are from Palestinian genocide, the children of Gaza, Palestinian family, and my own story that I have put onto canvas. And, uh, that has been quite powerful and uh, has related to many people and has been shown on television several times in Armenia and here and in France. And uh, the homeless, because in the 70s, 80s, I would see so many homeless in New York City, I just had to get it on canvas. Again, I did one and thought I've done it, and I ended up with 18 in the series. And what's the link between the, the biblical and the homeless for you? Humans. It's, uh, one is faith, my faith, and uh, my faith journey. Because I have another one about biblical parallels, putting the Hebrew Testament with the Greek Testament, the old and the new prophecy fulfillment. And I have 15 of those paintings. So it makes 30 with the, old, with the two. And uh, one is my faith and what humans have gone through with God in control. And the other one is humanity now, today, that is suffering. The, the, the homeless project. Exactly. I, I want to back up a bit because earlier on you had an aha moment about the, um, the power of art to change things. Mm. That's interesting. I never thought of it. Because to me, as I said, when I was thinking, should I go paint? What am I going to do with my life now? I only thought of painting like landscapes, portraits, scenes. Uh, but, and I didn't want to do that. I figured, why? It's been done. What am I going to do? But then when I started doing stories of my faith and stories of humanity, my parents' story, the, the refugees, the homeless, I saw that I was telling a story and touching people's lives and opening their eyes, you know, and getting compassion for these people. What evidence have you found that you're changing, making your work is changing the world? 
<laughs> I don't know if it's changing a part the, world. Of the world. It's changing a few people at a time, which is a way to start, because people are asking for these. Mm -hmm. Like my homeless are so popular. <laughs> uh, they were in Washington at the office of um, public witness, Presbyterian office. Then they went to New York to Yanhus for a year. And in that church, they feed the homeless like 2,000 a week. And they're very involved with the homeless, so the paintings were just perfect there. And then they went to Atlanta. What, what is it in, in those paintings that you think really touches people? Why, why are they so many people to, drawn to that homeless series? I think because it gives them time to look at each painting and look at it that, my gosh, this is a person. And he is in this position. For example, huddled. He's in a fetal position. And then there's uh, belongings. There's somebody pushing a cart with all his belongings in a cart and mothers clutching their children. That's their belonging. Mm -hmm. You know, it's down to basics. And it make, to me, it makes them human and gets people's compassion. Otherwise, they say, oh, they're lazy, they're addicts. Okay, some are and some aren't. So in other society, we have these. Tell me about your process. Do you say, I want people to see that they're human and this image will convey that, so I'm going to do that? Or do you just paint? Do you lay it all out first? Or no. do you, how does it work? Well, I see a scene and I'm touched by it. Like, let's take the huddled again. And I just look with compassion and I go there back to the canvas and I cover the white first. I need to have a color and then I just put him in very quickly. I'm not good in drawing. I draw as I paint which people are surprised and uh, then I follow the painting and it's interesting because uh, a nurse told me once, uh, you know you have captured the plight of the homeless. I said in what way? And she said, you have done their feet, that they have been misformed. They are swollen, they have big bunions. That's the first part of the homeless that goes, sort of mm. is broken because they don't have shoes proper, socks, and they're walking all the time. I had never realized I was doing it. And I said, oh, that's interesting. And I noticed that their shoes were broken and their feet were. So you noticed shoes. afterward, but yeah. obviously on some subliminal level you must have noticed it uh, first. Yes, exactly. That's so interesting to me that you say you follow the painting. That sounds like a very emotional as opposed to cerebral approach to art. That's very different from what a lot of artists do. Yeah, many artists plan it, they draw it, and then they put it on the canvas and they have everything in its place. I have a rough idea I put it in very broadly, abstractly, and, and then there is a relationship and a dialogue between the painter, the canvas and I. And mm -hmm. it sort of takes me, and I go with it. And if I like it, I follow. And if not, I tell it what I want. But uh, I don't have, I never know exactly what is going to come out. I am surprised. Do you feel that your relationship with the subject, let's say in this case the homeless, changes as you go along. You mean the actual painting? Well, it, as you paint, do you feel differently about the homeless population from, from when you started? Well, I feel more closer and I feel in touch. And I have actually, uh, in New Jersey, I used to stay whenever the church had the homeless come and stay. I always volunteered to stay with them and mm. made sure I had dinner with them and spoke with them. and was there when they went to bed and returned. And actually, I would have postcards and of my work, and I would give it to them. And they would say, this will be the first picture I will hang in my apartment when I get one. Oh, so nice. it gave them a little encouragement you know, uh, of something mm -hmm. to put up. When you paint, do you paint more for yourself? Because it sounds like you get into some internal uh, emotional, whatever, state, yeah. or do you paint more for the viewer? Uh, 
when you paint for the viewer, you mean so that they will buy it? Or, or are, are you saying, this is what I want my audience to see, take away? Uh, I try to express myself, and then what happens, I don't know. Hopefully, the viewer will look at it and say, oh, I see what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I hope, I don't do it really intentionally. I'm just expressing myself of what I've seen and what I'd like to express. Since that moment when you realized that art actually can change things, do you, have you felt any responsibility with your talents and your skills? Mm. That's a tough one. Uh, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, with the biblical ones, I feel it's telling others, those who, if they've made, made into DVDs, so that mm -hmm. is even more uh, reaching out to more people. I hope that what I'm saying and what I've done is the truth and that it's expressing exactly what I think and it is the right thing and I'm not misleading anybody. And uh, I would like people to, to go away with a message probably. What message in an overarching way, because um, I think there are links with all of your work, what do you most want people to come away with? When it comes to humans, I think to bring about caring, compassion, to evoke empathy, that uh, others are human, no matter what their state of life is. I mean, how downtrodden they have become, they're living on the street, they're still our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That uh, to care and get empathy for others. How and much of your own personal experience do you just keep coming back to? You're having been a refugee twice. And I've You're... worked with refugees. Mm -hmm. And what's the exact question? I'm just wondering how much that just keeps coming up because it's so much yeah. in you. It's, I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of it and I feel part of it. Uh, there's not much I can do. I mean, there's so many refugees. They say the highest number in the world right now, 65 million, is it? I mean, this is unbelievable. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that. When you look around today, what do you see that um, is relevant or frightening or disturbing that is exactly right there in the biblical work and exactly right there in all the other things that, that thematically it's, it's, it's all there. What, 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 is, what is there in the world today that fits under that umbrella? Nothing has been resolved. I mean, people were refugees in the Old Testament. People are refugees today in today's world. And uh, Humanity has to be, there has to be more love and caring. Mm -hmm. And it starts with me. <laughs> do, do you feel that, do you get maybe kind of hopeless <laughs> when you're working on these? I hate to say it. I try to say there's always hope, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. it is, but we can't believe it's hopeless because with faith, you have to have hope. Mm -hmm. So. And with hope, you have to have action. We have to do something, so. Now, speaking of action, what's next? Okay, uh, I've been going to the Commission for the Status of Women at the United Nations in New York, and I met a woman, a black African minister, and uh, she had a project that we promised, she has passed away since, I'm sad to say, and we have promised her that we will follow her dream and hopefully it will come true. There are about 30 incarcerated women in, an inst in a jail in, near Detroit, Ypsilanti, and they have been incarcerated for life for having killed their lovers, boyfriends, husband, whatever. But they did it only to save their lives because they were threatened to be killed and there was domestic abuse. And thank God they were not killed, but in the meantime, they did kill the person who was threatening them. 
and they should not be for life. They have children, they have families outside. So we're trying hard to see how we can help get them out of jail after they've done their sentence for whatever years. And what role would painting have in that? Uh, I'm not sure if I have any paintings exactly to depict this, but it's just trying to get uh, people to help work with us. There's about five or six mm -hmm. people I try to, uh, for us, and we're scattered in Alaska, in Detroit, in South Carolina, New York, and me in California. We're trying hard to see how we can get this to come true, to right. get these women. They've actually sent me a thank you letter and I have done nothing yet. I'm trying. Well, very, good luck on that and yeah. on, on all the rest of your work. Keep it up. Uh, we'll be looking for uh, what you produce in the future. Congratulations on this award, and thanks so much for coming. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Do you know someone who has overcome significant hardship and has an inspiring story to tell? Someone who has sacrificed or given over and above to the community and deserves some recognition? If so, please contact us with your nomination for next year's Local Hero Awards. To find out more about our local heroes and to watch interviews with all the winners, visit our website, midpenmedia.org. At the Midpen Community Media Center, you can make your own videos and television programs and take classes in all aspects of media production. You can also hire our professional services team. To find out more about that, go to mcproservices.com. Congratulations to all our winners, and thank you for watching.